Welcome back, everyone, to Titans of Today, brought to you by the Manuka Network. The three main takeaways that you're going to get from this show are improving your mindset, checking your beliefs, and propelling yourself into a higher level of energy, a better you, taking that bold step. So I'm very grateful. I've been looking forward to this interview for over a month now. It's with Larry Long, Jr. He is the founder and CEO of LLJR Enterprises, which focuses on sales motivation, inspiration, training, and coaching. And he's the host of the Midday mid uh midweek midday motivational minute and the author of jolt his new book go ahead and check it out I believe it's on amazon there as a former college athlete go terps he played baseball for university of maryland larry's an extremely passionate and you're definitely going to see that in this interview about coaching and taking professionals to the next level of their game so welcome larry Hey, I appreciate it, Jacob. Where do I where do I mail the check for that kind introduction? You make it sound like I'm doing big things. CEO. It's not your traditional CEO. It's chief energy officer. Wow, that's, that's my right. title. Yes, absolutely. A huge differentiator there. Tell me more about what it's like to be the chief energy officer. Man, life, life is good. Life is good. Every day that we uh that that we have the opportunity to live. Uh, I believe that we should do it with energy, with positivity, optimism, and really, I don't know if you're a Latin scholar, but carpe diem. We should be seizing each and every day. I met a gentleman who had it tattooed on his forearm. He also had carpe noctum tattooed on his other forearm. I said, I'm a little bit too old to be <laughs> seizing the night. I, I can't be carpe noctum in. Uh, I need to take a nap, but I can carpe diem with the best of them. <laughs> Amazing. So let's get down into it. What is the story of Larry Long Jr.? What made you into who you are today? Oh, man, there's so much. But uh, I think a lot of it comes down to my roots of uh, my mom and my father. I lost my dad uh, almost six years ago. And just being able to observe, he grew up in Baltimore City in the projects, uh, surrounded by violence, drugs, uh, just a lot of bad stuff. But he was able to really dedicate himself to a better life, uh, find a way to get to college. He was the only one from his family to graduate high school. So when I was born, being able to see his example of working hard, of setting goals, high goals, dreaming big, I mean, that, that plays a, a, a part as you grow up and you see someone who doesn't believe the hype that they can't do this. And pretty much he said, you tell me I can't do it. I'm going to do it. I mean, my dad was his nickname was Shorty Long. He was five foot eight. He was a long jumper and triple jumper at University of Maryland. So I come from a legacy. My sister ran track at Maryland. I was the black sheep playing baseball. They said, baseball? I said, yeah, you run after you hit the ball. They said, we'll let it slide, little Larry. So all of that has really made me who I am. I care about people. I, uh, I'm loud, if you can't tell. I love to talk. I, I don't leave home without the microphones. Ah! Yeah, I got enough microphones to, to <laughs> last a lifetime. Come on, Jacob, we ain't messing around. <laughs> but uh, just a passion for life, a passion for people, love serving, love caring, love helping people to take their game to that next level. What was one significant experience, let's say when you were in college, that guided your life path and really brought you to where you are today? Oh, this was early in my baseball career. So second semester, uh, freshman year, I started off my career one for 24, one hit out of 24 at bats. I'm not a math major, but I think that works out to 0.042, which uh, if you're a baseball fan or know anything about baseball, that's terrible. That'll get you <laughs> playing the position of left out. Hey, coach, can I get in? <laughs> nah, dude, you're left out. Uh, and go to the end of the bench because whatever you have, it might be contagious. Keep your droplets and your terrible batting average to yourself. So I remember we had just gotten done playing UNC Greensboro, University of North Carolina, Greensboro. And my dad had come down. He, he made the trip to almost every game that he could make from Maryland. And uh, we were talking on the phone and he said, how you feeling, little Larry? I said, Pops, I feel terrible. I stink. I don't belong in Division I. I definitely don't belong in the ACC, the Atlantic Coast Conference. My dad jumped through that phone. He yanked me up. He had some choice words that I won't repeat. But he pretty much said, that's not the mindset that we have. That's not how we talk. And in order for you to have my name, you better do better. 
You better have a better attitude. He said, you got to get back to the drawing board. You got to practice. I, I don't know if Allen Iverson is listening, but we're talking about practice, Allen, <laughs> not the game. And then he said, most importantly, you got to get your mind right. So lo and behold, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, they came to town. And I got in that bed at the end of the game, got a little blue bit over the first baseman's head. You could have called me Kanye West. You can't <laughs> tell me nothing. I'm on top of the world. I started Saturday, three for four. Started Sunday, two for four. I batted 289, uh, 318, 319 in conference. Uh, my freshman year, four-year yeah. starter. But it all came from that, that stern talking to from my dad that got me on the right track. So how could you give that to people right here? Of course, without maybe the choice of words, but how could you have that quick mindset shift that someone could see that and have that kind of breakthrough awakening that you did? Yeah. For anyone listening, be careful of that voice that talks to yourself, that tells yourself, I can't, I'm not able. Break out of it right now and let's rewrite that narrative. Let's go ahead and tell ourselves everything that we can do. Let's tell ourselves everything that is possible. Let's surround ourselves with encouraging people like my dad that are going to speak life, that are going to speak positivity, that aren't going to drag you down. And believe you me, it takes work. I work with a coach. And she said, what's up, what's up Coach Kristen Fraid? She said, Larry, you talk so positively. You're so uplifting to everyone else. But when you start talking about yourself, you're so negative. You talk more stuff, more smack to yourself than you would ever talk to anyone else. Then you would ever let someone talk to you and it's holding you back. And she was right. So I encourage all your listeners, stop holding yourself back. Dream, dream big and dream bigger. Because if you put your mind to it, anything is possible. Now, when you get down into the routine, did your routine change as well? You mentioned practice and other things like that but was it like there was a mindset shift and then the actions changed was it the identity level right if we go down into that those levels of change there was something in a, that your father said to you that was hey if you have my name you got to live up to it. you have to do better that that's down at that identity level are there things like that um that you can provide or that you do on a daily basis to make sure you're you're working from that deepest level yeah so i mean the the behavior remained the same i was working hard busting my behind the big thing was the mindset. I was thinking negatively. I don't belong here. I, I can't do this. And I, I, I uh, experienced this when I went out on my own for my current business. I still had the scar tissue of a failed business 12 years, uh, 16 years ago. And, and essentially, I brought that back. I'm not a good entrepreneur. I shouldn't go out on my own. When in reality, the talk track is, you can do it if you put your mind to it. So yes, the behavior, if you're not working hard, you're not taking the action, you're not surrounding yourself with the right people and great people, you're going to have a very tough time. Even if you do, it's still going to be tough. But one thing I found is that tough people are greater than tough times. So Jacob, I encourage folks to dream big while also putting in the action, while also doing the behaviors, having the habits that are going to assist you in building a great foundation and then building upon that where you can learn, where you can grow and you can get closer to whatever that goal, whatever that vision is that you have that you're trying to attain. So let's say we visualize it as a line and we get people up with the mindset and they're, they're up they're they're able to sustain it for a while, but then they go back. I know a lot of people are going to be like, hey, man, I, I've tried that. I've tried giving myself that positive reinforcement. Then they fall back under the line. Is What is the process there to keep yourself above that line, regardless if you fall back and you have those experiences where like, dang it, I slipped and I just was negative on myself or something. You're, you're, you're a person. You're human. We all go through it. Being consistent and staying above that line, that's the toughest thing in the world. But giving yourself the space and giving yourself the grace to fall below that line and realizing, hey, I'm going to battle back. And that's where the power of letting other people know what you're trying to accomplish. Having an A-team around you that's cheering you on. Hercules, Hercules, people that are supporting you along this journey 
and then vice versa, people that you're supporting. I'm on a weight loss journey. I'm I'm probably 20, I'm about 24 pounds greater than my playing weight. And I'm mm-hmm. battling to get back to 199. It seems so far away, but I've got folks. Hey, Larry, how are you doing in terms of your movement? Are you walking around the neighborhood like you had committed to? Mm-hmm. How are you doing in terms of what you eat? Are you mixing in a salad? Are you still munching on steak? You better mix in some green leafies or else that 199 will not be able to be attained. So it's really about finding the right people. And then also being, being uh, uh, not soft, but giving yourself grace. Mm. I mean, we all make mistakes. There's no one who's perfect. Sometimes we believe that if we fail or we're unsuccessful, oh, the woe is me. The, the world is coming to an end. No, you can always come back. You can always battle back. And remember, I heard this from Chick, Chip Eichelberger, who I played golf with a couple of weeks ago. A streak starts with one. Absolutely. And then people can realize that that's the game is to stay above the line. And if you're staying above the line, the thinking is the 99% that creates. So if you have that, that positivity, positivity, all of a sudden those results are going to shift. Big time, big time. Trust the process. Enjoy the process. Uh, With my coach, we talk about vision and goals versus reality. And oftentimes there is a gap Sometimes we look at that gap as, oh, no, there's shame because there's a gap there. What we've started to do and what we've started to play with is what if we stepped into the gap with a mindset of opportunity, a mindset of growth, a mindset of challenge to go ahead and close that gap between where reality is and where the goal and the vision uh, is right now. So, That's one thing that I'm working on now is how I interact with that gap. Whereas before it was kind of shame, like shame on me that this is where I'm at and this is where I want to be. Whereas now it's like, this is exciting that I get the opportunity to work that gap, to close that gap. You turn in the negative one into a positive one saying, you know what, because you have this goal and I've heard, maybe you've heard this before where it's like a rubber band that has tension. And the higher that goal is, it's actually pulling you more. And, and if you're resisting it, it doesn't feel good. But when you go with it, it can actually drive you to where you want to go. I love that analogy. I'm, I'm picturing it right now. Spot on, JB. <laughs> awesome. So this brings up something as well that perhaps can help people. I'm sure you're familiar with the quote from Zig Ziglar. People say motivation doesn't last, but it's a lot like bathing. You have to keep doing it. And I really... I definitely am going to take this one for myself. And I know all the listeners will value that as well about setting up the people around you who are going to support you. And then you're supporting them, giving them recognition because then you're going to see yourselves in them. Or how does that work? Why is that so powerful when you have people around you that are supporting you and that you're supporting them as well? Yeah. Jim, Jim Rohn says it best. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So making sure that you're diligent and do an audit of who are you spending time with? I, I wrote a chapter in my book, called you are what you consume uh if you are what you eat that would make me a fried chicken because hey what time is it is bow time i love some bojangles chicken and biscuits but seriously what people are you surrounding yourself with what books are you reading what podcasts are you listening to on a regular basis because it has an impact on you whether you like it or not whether you know it or not so really sewing into those folks that are positive and uplifting and supporting of you, that's the way to go. And I encourage folks, some folks say, well, how do I do it? I'll give you something. It's called the hashtag three minute challenge. Every day, every weekday, go into your Rolodex. I know some people are like, hold up, Rolodex? Is that the fancy watch? Nah, that's a Rolex. (laughs) That's too expensive. I can't even spell it. But go into your contact list in your phone. Find someone that you haven't been in touch with It could be three weeks, three months, three years. And all I want you to do is think how you can surprise and delight them. What can you send them that'll bring a smile to their face that will let them know that you're thinking about them? If you were my surprise and delight, Jacob, I would probably send you a funny gif around sports. Who doesn't like to laugh around something around sports? 
I'm going to say, hey, Jacob, hope all is well. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. I was just thinking about you, dog. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm just making a deposit into that relationship. Mm. I'm making you feel good so that when I do need something two years down the road, five years down the road, maybe never, we have that relationship. It's not just me coming to make a withdrawal when I've never made a deposit, but I'm thoughtfully making a deposit to make your life better. Bring a smile to your face because whether you know it or not, people are going through stuff. Sometimes you don't even know it. The stuff that people are going through, life is tough. It's a four letter word for a reason. So being able to impact someone's life in a meaningful way, it goes a long ways. Hmm. And would you prioritize giving over receiving? 1,000%. 1,000%. Very interesting experience. We are just talking before this about how I just had a, the vaccine and I got sick. And I think, and I definitely know you're going to resonate with this one is when you go through things that are challenging, you oftentimes think in different ways. You get an insight that you wouldn't otherwise have. And one of my big insights that just came out of nowhere was give more, focus more on giving and just stop thinking about, hey, this person didn't do this or, or that, you know, I can't believe they didn't say anything about this good thing I did, you know? And it's like, when you just flip that script and say, hey, if I can make them feel good, when, when you give gleefully and with no expectation of receiving anything, amazing things happen. And it might not be immediate. I know we live in a microwave society where we want it right now. I'm playing the long game. And I know that if I continue to give and give and give, somehow, some way, I'm going to receive. Now, I'm not expecting to receive, but I just know that if I go ahead and I sow into other people, I plant those seeds, eventually something's gonna sprout up. Maybe next week, maybe next year, maybe 10 years from now, but I just know if I plant all the seeds that I can of sowing into other people, amazing things will happen. Were you raised with a biblical foundation? Yeah, yeah, I grew up in the church. Uh, faith is is really the foundation of how I live my how I try to live my life. Let's let's keep it real. I'm trying my best to to live the best life that I can. I was listening to a sermon by T.D. Jakes, and it was about keeping it a hundred. And he says, "Well, you really keep it about ninety percent because if you really kept it a hundred, you probably lose your job. You probably you know you lose your marriage and other things like that. But how do you how do you uh, view that that quote?" Yeah, I mean, I can give you my my story. I yeah. left corporate America because I had to put the mask on, literally and figuratively, mm. not just to keep my droplets to myself, but I couldn't be my full, authentic Larry Long Jr. Now that I own my own business, I'm wide open. I keep it 100 all, almost all the time. There's a time and a place, but more times than not, I get to be my authentic self. I don't have to put on a front, a mask of what I expect, what people expect out of me. No, take it or leave it. If you don't like me being loud, me laughing, me smiling, we don't need to work together. It's okay. You're not my tribe. We're not meant to work together. But what I found is it's liberating to be able to come in and be 1000% me. Nothing beats it. You don't have to pretend to be hello, this is Larry Long Jr. No, that's not how I talk. That's not how I roll. I pity the fool. Come on, Jay. <laughs> so I encourage folks to the best of their ability to be their authentic self. And T.D. Jakes is right. Sometimes you got to put a filter on. You got to understand the time and the place. Because if I was my authentic self, I probably wouldn't have had uh, the professional success that I had because sometimes you got to be a chameleon, but uh, as best as you can, I encourage you to be yourself. Now let's go back in to this earlier in the story. And I definitely want to ask, but how does someone take that bold step into being their authentic self? But to go back maybe into some of that scar tissue, you mentioned about the business that didn't work out. Was it a similar thing that occurred? Uh, was it, was it a similar Larry that came forth? Let's say when you were in college and you had that 
negativity? Was it a was it a mindset thing back then? What was it? And then what has made this now what you're doing very successful? Or yeah, so with the baseball academy, that was not understanding the numbers that matter. I knew the numbers of batting averages, stolen bases, home runs, RBIs. What I didn't understand, and my partner either, was the numbers of the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. And when you have more money going out the back door than you have coming in the front door, uh uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. We ran out of cash. My mom, my dad, my grandmom, they bailed us out. They bailed us out again. Then they said, guess what, Larry? You're not a big bank. You're not too big to fail. We love you so much. We're going to let you shut that thing down. Mm. I said, wow, that's a whole lot of love. But I learned my lesson that if you don't understand your numbers, you're going to have a very tough time being successful in business. Now, that learning has now taught me that in my business now, I better understand my income statement, my balance sheet, my statement of cash flows. And even if I don't understand it to the best of my abilities, I better bring in people that do and that help me to understand it so that I at least have a chance to be successful. So that lesson right there, we go through ups and downs. And my encouragement is that through the ups, you learn, through the downs, you learn. And through the downs, you learn, how would I do it again? What would I do differently? How can I apply that learning from this negative experience and turn it into a positive? So so that's my encouragement. Mm. And I'm sure there's some psychological research behind the fact that when you do go through a failure, you do have some anger or something that makes you feel those more powerful, intense emotions that change occurs quicker. You remember that. Yeah, I I would certainly uh, imagine so. I know for me, I was gun shy in opening up my business this time around. That scar tissue just had me scared. I said, oh, I don't want to put my family through not being able to pay the bills, not being able to do the things that we'd like to do. But then I had my mom, I had my wife encouraging me. Hey, Larry, this is where you need to be. Let's go ahead and make that jump. We got your back. We're cheering you on. You can do it. And when you have that belief behind you, it's kind of like one of my favorite songs by McFadden and Whitehead. Ain't no stopping me now. That's my jam right there. Now you heard my other theme song, Pharrell Happy, which is how I try to live my my life every day. But when I ever get to a down point, I throw on some McFadden and Whitehead, Ain't No Stopping Me Now. I I jam, I listen to the words, and it really turns, it turns me in the right, it turns the the frown upside down into a smile. Mm -hmm. So that's how, let's really go into that. If I I was in in a bad place and I wanted to take that step into a being a bold me, live my authentic self, maybe jolt myself to throw the title of the book in there into something so much better, what do I need to start doing? Yeah, first you gotta write down your goals. You gotta write down your vision. And I think there's a thing called smart goals. This is just my take. I believe smart goals are dumb. I don't, I like specific. I like measurable. I like time bound. I don't like attainable or realistic. You're limiting yourself. Who's the, who's the define what's attainable? What's realistic? So I encourage you to write down your goals, but dream big. Okay. Dream bigger. Okay. Even bigger. Because I would say the sky's the limit. But I'll be honest with you, there is no limit. I never would have imagined, who would have thunk it, that Larry Long Jr. would be an author? I didn't think I could be an author. I would have told you, heck to the no. My English teachers would have said, oh, heck to the no. (laughs) There's no way he's going to be an author. But you know what? I set my mind to it. I wrote down my goal, my vision. I surrounded myself with the team. I worked hard and I was able to complete it. So that's what I encourage folks to do is, Write down your goals, your vision, and then put together a game plan. What actions are you going to take right now? What people are you going to surround yourself that support you? Because if you don't have a vision of where you're going, if you don't have a compass, you're going to end up losing your way more than likely. So you have to have the vision, build the support systems, and then feed your mind, like you were mentioning, with the right things, consume the right content, listen to the right music. What other small habits that maybe people 
have or have not heard before that can help them with staying above the line, getting to where they want to get to? Yeah, well, I mean, you got to find what works for you. What mm. works for me doesn't work for everyone. I, I encourage you to do some self-reflection. For some people, it's yoga. I tried hot yoga once. I almost died. For me, it's listening to positive YouTube. I listen to some Tony Robbins, listen to some Les Brown, some E.T., and it, essentially the algorithm gives me that cycle of other, oh, if you like listening to E.T., you'll love listening to Inky. Oh, wow. If you like Inky, you'll listen to Denzel. But that just, that works for me. My kids, I got an eight-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son. I can't be upset with anything when I'm around them. My beautiful wife. So I encourage people to find what works for you, what inspires you, what's your why to keep you going through the tough times, what's going to light that fire beneath your behind to have you taking action, because that's the, that's one of the toughest things is taking action, and then when you get hit over the head, how do you get back on that horse and take more action, once you get hit again, how do you keep coming back over and over and over again, and not just giving up, majority of people just give up. I mean, they, they just, they, they take the easy route. I'll just do this. I'll diminish what I want to do just to, cause it's comfortable. I encourage folks to deliberately get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Let's go ahead and step out and get in our uncomfortable zone. Just like something. And I know you do sales coaching and training. Now I'm sure you apply that. Go for the no, turn your, turn your outcome into, yeah, I want to get the no embrace that yeah i mean that's um it, it can be so discouraging hearing no but knowing that every no is getting you closer to a yes learning from the no's of why it was a no and then learning from the yeses to get more yeses mm -hmm. um i can tell you call reluctance picking up that 500 pound phone oh it, it'll kill you but for those that realize I've got to trust the process, I've got to give myself a chance up the bat. I have to make these calls because that's what's going to get me where I need to go with my goal and my vision. If you have a, a, a strong internal compass, a strong internal driver, I think Simon Sinek calls it your why, you're going to find a way to make it happen. You're going to find all the reasons why you can make it happen versus if your internal why is flimsy, you'll probably find all the reasons why not to do it. Hmm. So let's go into your why. When you started your company, has your why been the same or has it maybe gone deeper and deeper, right? That deeper foundation, has it evolved since you continued your journey? I've been in business full time for a little over a year. And I first started out on my own to have a greater impact on a greater number of people. It's gotten a little bit tighter. I mean, I've got my board right here, my core values, family first, people centric, always do good, try your best. My mission is still right around the same to lift up and elevate individuals and organizations to their next level. That's what I'm all about. I'm all about helping others to get one notch, one notch higher to find their inner greatness, to not be limited by their own minds in terms of what they can do. My vision, create a kinder and happier world where everyone is living their best life. That's what I'm trying to do, Jacob. I want to see you thriving, living your best life. Your listeners, why not you? That's the question. Why not you? If someone's going to do it, why not you live your best life? live your blessed life. What's holding you back? I should be a lawyer. I'm asking questions I already know the answer to. <laughs> You're holding yourself back. In the words of the great philosopher, Ludacris, he has a song that says, move, get out the way. I encourage you, get out of your own way and let's be great. Hmm. Now, is there a what? I know that was, that was, there was a strong what in there, but is there a tangible, hey, I want to serve, you know, 10,000 companies, or I want to, it's just everybody, right? Is the vision really what drives it? Or is there a specific, okay, I want to do a million in revenues this year or 2 million or are, are there what metrics like that as well? Yeah. So last year we had revenue targets, we had impact targets and you talked about 10,000. 
it was to touch 10,000 people, which I missed. There was a gap between the number of people that I spoke with and the goal that I set. And I also had a golf goal. I, I don't know if you know I'm Tiger Woods' cousin. I'm his long lost cousin. Larry hit it in the woods, but that's neither <laughs> here nor there. But yes, there, there are tangible numbers this year. It's really focused on revenue because if we generate revenue, we're able to impact more and more people. And I didn't share this with you, but I, I put a stake in the ground. And this is one of my strong whys. December 11th, 2025, my goal and my commitment is that on that date, I would have either broken ground and or have a fully funded foundation to support inner city youth and honor my father. The Shorty Long Foundation, we're, we're, we're stashing away 7% of all revenues that I make go to this foundation to support inner city youth that want to pursue higher education, but might not have the financial resources. So that's what drives me. It's not about me. I want to take care of, care of myself, my family, but I also want to make sure I'm supporting others because I've been blessed. I've been really, really blessed. Hashtag too blessed to be stressed. Hashtag living my best life. Hashtag living my blessed life. How can I support others? And there's a question, Martin Luther King Jr. He says it. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing to help someone else out? If you can answer that every day, you're living a pretty fulfilled life. Awesome. Now you, where's that going to, that foundation going to be? The facility, do you have a vision of where that's going to be, where you're going to break ground? All those things. I, I live in, I live in Durham, North, North Carolina. Yeah, I live in about. Durham, North Carolina. My father grew up in Baltimore City. It's going to be either one of those locations or maybe even both. We'll see where it goes. But by that date, we're going to make sure that we're writing a check by December 11, 2025. We're at least going to be writing a check to an inner city youth that wants to go on and pursue higher education. So that's my commitment. That's what I'm working towards, trying to impact lives. I'm guessing you've already written that check in your mind. It's, uh, it's a pretty big check. There's a few zeros at the end. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue to step into it. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about, you mentioned focusing on revenues. You have to, would you say, put yourself first in a lot of, in, in many degrees. Let's say you're going to go pursue that goal. Maybe put yourself first is the exact term you want to use. But, you know, to, to really serve on a greater level, you have to go experience and achieve that greater level of success, uh, success actualize that greater version, uh, version of yourself. What what can you tell more people about that? Uh, tell people more about that in particular, because there's often a mindset of, you know, hey, I, I'll charge I'll charge less than what it's worth or, you know, I'll charge just more than it than it costs me to do it. And it's a mindset that holds people back from actually doing more for people. Big, big time. Number one, you got to know your value and believe in and trust your value. Number two, if you're not doing that out of profit, you probably won't be doing it very long. It's just the nature of business. So if I want to impact lives, but I'm losing money, I'm probably not going to be impacting lives for a long time. If I'm making money, if I'm generating revenues and profit, now I have the ability, the opportunity to serve even more. So it's that mindset shift, that perspective shift that if I'm charging below market rates, if I'm charging below what my value is I'm doing myself and others a disservice and it's not going to be sustainable. So I had to battle through that because as a professional speaker, there's an interesting mm, psychology behind charging fees when it comes to you. I, I can sell a software for hundreds of thousands of dollars, no sweat. But when it comes to selling Larry Long Jr., there was a little bit of a disconnect of, imposter syndrome? Am I really worth this much? Whoa, you're going to pay me that much to come in and rock the mic and speak with your team? Heck to the nah. But now I realize that, hey, if I'm adding value, which I do, I should be receiving value back. And that value back should have a few zeros at the end. I, I don't know if you can tell how many zeros I wrote. <laughs> but, but yeah, there, there should be a few zeros at the end to make sure that we can continue to help and serve even more.
So it was the mindset shift of that. You're able to actually serve more people, but were, what was that exact moment when you went from charging less to charging more? That was like, you know, did, did it actually get easier the more you did it? It, it got, e better? it got easier when I changed my perspective of <laughs> I'm not charging you to put dollars in my pocket. I'm charging you to put dollars in my pocket so I can then contribute to the Shorty Long Foundation. So now I don't have any problem at all letting folks know that my fees start at 15,000. Before I was very gun shy. That seems like a pretty big number, but it's relative. And I spoke to some of my speaker friends that said, hey, there is there are some folks that are charging a lot more than that with a lot more confidence than you are Get with the program, Larry. Get Go ahead and whip yourself into shape, Larry. So I've been stepping into that greatness. And just like anything else, the more you do it, the easier it gets, the more confident you are, the more belief you have behind it. And it's amazing uh, what the market will bear, where people see your value when you see your own value. If you don't believe in your value, Good luck having anyone else believe in your value. Does everything begin within? I wouldn't say everything, but most things do. Starts right here in your heart, goes to your head, goes to your words, and that drives your actions. Most things, I, I can't say all, but most things, yeah, it starts starts with you. Hmm. Now, we, you, one of the concepts that I want to discuss here is internal motivation versus external motivation. What is the real difference for people and how does someone know they're intrinsically motivated or establish intrinsic motivation and is actually one better than the other? Yeah, that, that's an interesting question. I'm a big believer that what drives you inside is stronger than anything else. I mean, what, what's your, when you really strip it down, What's your why? What, what, are you, what are you trying to accomplish? Why? Who are you serving? Why? Um, I don't know. I mean, some people are driven by the fancy car. They're driven by the zeros in their bank account, which is fine. I can only speak for myself. For me, I'm driven by the impact. Let me clear that up. Positive impact on other people's lives. That's, that's what I consider winning the relationships, the positive relationships that I've been able to build and will continue to build, that's what drives me. But like I said before, everyone needs to find what drives them. And just because it works for someone doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. So I encourage folks to really find what drives you. Maybe it is something external, extrinsic. Maybe it is intrinsic, maybe it's internal. For me, it's that internal knowing that I gave my best. I think Tony Horton, I don't know if you've ever done P90X. Mm -hmm. I did P60X. I didn't make it 90 days. <laughs> but, but he had a comment that said, try your best and forget the rest. If you can look in the mirror and say, I tried my best, you can forget the rest. But if you can't look at yourself in the mirror and honestly say, I tried my best, you need to get back on that horse and try again. Hmm. So you mentioned you have a, a health goal. You have your business goals. Uh, what about family goals? Very, very, very specific family goals in terms of being present. Uh, your presence, my presence is the best present that I can give to my family. So my daughter, she goes to gymnastics. She's taking a break this summer, but the parents are on the second floor. The gymnasts are on the first floor. My daughter would look up at me and daddy was looking down but he was looking down at his cell phone. So she looks up and she's like, daddy's here, but he's not really here. So I made it a point to make sure that I was present. One time I left my phone in the car. I was in a boatload of trouble. I was going through withdrawal. So I said, let me make a concession. I still bring my phone in, but I pop in my earbuds. I got the little Apple earbuds. Yeah, I'm not sponsored by them, but I pop in the earbuds to make sure that I'm listening to something but when she looks up at me, I'm looking down at her. We make eye contact. I give her the two thumbs up. She gives me the two thumbs up. She knows that I'm there for her. Now, how do you take it to the next level? What I've started doing is taking pictures,
taking a little video so that when we're driving, I can play it back and say, hey, little Lulu, my daughter's name is Lucia, but she goes by Lulu. I say, hey, little Lulu girl, I loved it when you were on the beam and here goes a video that I made of you. That's next level right there. Now I got to break my brain and figure out what's even next, next level. Is it me getting down there and actually trying to trying to do the balance beam? I don't know, but I'm trying to think of how can I be even more impactful in the mm. lives? And a lot of times it's your time. Your time is such a precious resource when you devote it to your family, to your significant others, to your friends, it makes a world of difference. You can throw money at anything, but your time is so much more valuable. Man, that's really impactful internally for me just thinking about how that can shift other people's lives of just focusing on how, how do I, how do I even serve them better? How do I even take it to the next level, man? It just gives you this freedom of energy. It just changes your whole mindset when you, when you start to think that way. Big time, big time. It's, it's exciting when you think about it because the opportunities are endless mm. and uh, I don't know, what can you beat more than opportunity, the opportunity to be great the opportunity to get better, the opportunity to serve others and bring a smile to their face, make them feel good. Wow. How big of a difference maker was it in your life when you became a father? Ooh, it was, uh, it was a challenge, but I had a great dad growing up, rest in peace. And uh, since it was my dad passing that baton on to me, hey boy, I trained you. I hope you learn. And now it's on you. So my son just uh, played today, just played in the uh, Little League State Championship. His team lost, but they come back tomorrow trying to punch their ticket to regionals. And then from regionals, try to punch their ticket to the Little League World Series. So just being able to pass on to my son lessons that I've learned, being able to be there as a guide for him as a young adult. He's 12, trying to navigate the world that we live in, trying to navigate all the different situations that he's presented with, nothing beats it. Being a father, I can tell you nothing beats it. The highs, the lows, the twists and the turns, everything. It, it's amazing. Next level, it's amazing. And what, what makes a great marriage? Oh, there's a lot of components. A lot of components. I mean, number one is love, care, trust communication. Can you hear me now? Listening. I mean, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> you got me choked up over here. <laughs> uh, it takes work. My wife and I, we just celebrated our 16 year wedding anniversary. So we've been really blessed and fortunate along this journey, along this adventure together. Sometimes it's been a misadventure together, but we, we're learning throughout it. And it just, it constantly evolves. There's constantly things that are coming in to the equation that when you do it together, there's nothing that beats it. Even through the low points, and we've had some low points, nothing beats it when you, if you find the right person. I mean, I've, I've been so fortunate. I, I outkick my coverage with my wife. I mean, I, that's the best sale I've ever made, Jacob. Come on now. But uh mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a relationship expert. All I can talk about is from my experience. It's really the, the trust, the love, the care, the honesty, the communication, the listening, uh, being on the same page or trying to, and then the work. I mean, it's when I talk about back to basics, anything worth having in life, it takes work. It's not, I don't know. We, we, we get jaded by Social media, everything is awesome. It's all hunky-dory. No, it takes work. Life is messy. If you believe life is social media, that's just the best. You see the best of the best on social media. Real deal life, it's messy. It's not all sunshine, unicorns, and rainbows. It's messy. But if you can enjoy it and enjoy it together, ooh, in the words of the great philosopher, J.J. Walker, dino <laughs> Awesome stuff. Now let's go into that personal experience. The book Jolt. Yeah. Tell us more. What's it? What's it all about? Yeah, I mean, it, the subtitle is "Get Zapped into Intentionality, Rediscover, and Believe in Your Inner Greatness." So, at the beginning of COVID, it was right around mid-April. 
I started doing a midweek, midday motivational minute. Every Wednesday at 12 noon to start off with, I would just publish it on LinkedIn. Then I got approved for LinkedIn Live. So I would go live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. I started going live on Instagram on my phone and just sharing. I call it the midweek, midday motivational minute, but it's about 10 to 14 minutes just sharing a word of encouragement, just sharing a topic to think about. So when I had about four, I think I was right around 48 topics, I started working with a book consultant to take my most meaningful seven topics to make my book. And that's pretty much the genesis of the seven chapters of my book, Strikeouts, They're a Part of Life. Sales, what does it mean to you and how do you use it to your advantage? Lessons from my dad, motivation, where does yours come from? Back to basics. Those were all topics that I talked about with the book. I'm now able to further expand and provide stories from my life, provide examples of folks that I know in a written format. And I'm about to get in the studio to record the audio book. Watch out now because I'm recording my own audio book. So now the emotion behind the words is hopefully going to come through for those that consume their books in audio fashion. Mm. But uh, I, I still pitch myself every day, Jacob. I never would have imagined that I'd be a real deal author. Never in my wildest dreams. Now, the family, working with the family, we're talking about putting together a children's book. Who would have thunk it? I'm thinking about volume two. Come on now. So it's been absolutely amazing. And the feedback from folks that have shared your words have had an impact, a positive impact on my life. Your words have had a, uh, they've allowed me to transform my thinking, my mindset, my motivation, mission accomplished. If I can just impact one person's life for the positive, that's all I need. And to be able to hear from more than one has just been so amazing. And one great tip for when that audiobook version comes out that I recently learned is listening to the audiobook and reading the book at the same time. Wow, that's really strong. It's straight into the mind. I, I experienced it. it was like really that. cool. So, I like that. so definitely uh, take that one up. And I want to see if there's anything else I was going to mention about that in particular, the audiobook. Oh, also, yeah, the whenever I whenever there is a book where the audiobook is read by the author it takes it to a whole nother level. So I'm sure a lot of people will gain a lot of value from that. I, I certainly hope so. And I'm just excited mm -hmm. for the opportunity. Uh, I guess you could say I'm playing with house money, Jacob. I never would have imagined that this is the life that I'm living. My coach said, hey, let's continue to work to create a life that you never would have imagined. Mm -hmm. And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm doing. And my goal, honestly, is to do that for myself and to help others. I, I have a coaching practice where I work with uh, leaders, business leaders, some sales leaders, entrepreneurs, and I'm helping them to paint, to craft a life that they never would have imagined, a life that they look back on. And they say, wow, who would have thunk that I could be doing what I'm doing? <sighs> Mind blown. Mind blown. Create a life you never would have imagined. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I never would have I never would have imagined that I'd be rocking the mic or mics and getting paid for it. Jacob, I used to get sent to detention for talking. <laughs> this just shows you anything is possible. Shoot, to be able to talk, to be able to help and serve others and to make a living doing it. Come on now. I think they say that's the American dream. I'm living the dream. Absolutely. So what can we do to support you? You're doing it. I appreciate you allowing me to come on your platform. If anyone's listening to this and your organization is looking for a speaker, a coach, a trainer, keep me in mind. I would love the opportunity to serve your organization to help you and your team take it, take it to that next level. So that's all I ask. You get a chance, look me up on LinkedIn, connect with me. I'm all about establishing relationships. Happy to help. Anything that I can do to serve, just let Larry Long Jr. know. Fantastic. And what's the first action you want everybody to take as soon as they they finish this video? Yeah, as soon as you get done with this, write out your goals and your vision. And, and then don't just write it out. I want you to dream big. 
and dream bigger and write out even bigger goals. Those goals that, that make, for me, the little hair that I got left, make it stand up on your hair, make the hair on your neck stand up. And then I want you to go and dream even bigger. Stuff that's so far off that you would be like, wow, there's no way, that's impossible. Write it down. And then from there, I know you asked for one, but from there, I want you to work backwards. I want you to think about what are the steps that it would take in order for that crazy, wild, I think some people call it BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal. In order for that to happen, what are some of the things that you would need? Who are some of the people that you would need in your corner? And then from there, let it marinate. And I think as you let it marinate, there's going to be some stuff that comes to your mind. You're going to start to get excited. You're going to start to say, you know what? That, that crazy dude, Larry Long Jr. was right. Let me go ahead and make this happen. And when you make it happen, it. Please, please let me know. So you asked for one. I gave you a couple bonuses. Write it down. Dream big. Dream bigger. Dream big S. And then let's make it happen. Keep me posted. Larry Long Jr., absolute pleasure to have you here on the Titans of Today podcast. Everybody, like, subscribe, and go check out Larry's book on Amazon. And again, any companies looking for Larry's support, reach out. He's a great motivator, great man, and we'll see you all in the next interview. Thank you so much, Jacob. You're welcome.